Today in the news, we got some new CPUs with an unfortunate fate, an Intel element, and some PlayStation 5 info. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. Today, they unveiled two new processors for desktops, both which we knew were coming and are on the opposite sides of their lineup, the R9 3900 and the 3500X. In terms of specs, we already knew what we were getting. The 3900 is a 12 core, 24 thread CPU with a base clock of 3.1 gigahertz and a boost of 4.3. Its special sauce is the low TDP at only 65 watts. As for the 3500X, it's a six core CPU with 12 threads. The base clock is 3.6 gigahertz with a boost of 4.1 and it also has 32 megabytes of L3 cache. Now we knew that these were coming. What I wasn't expecting was for them to be OEM and system integrator exclusives or at least I wasn't expecting the 3500X to be. Oh and the 3500X seems to be a Chinese exclusive right now. There is still a bit of hope left for a low cost six core six thread CPU to enter the market as a standard alone in the form of the R5 3500, but apparently that model will feature half of the L3 cache that is currently available for the 3500X. Without a 6 core 6 thread CPU, AMD is losing out on a pretty big market where they could compete against the 9400F from Intel. Personally, I would have used it for a HTBC. Speaking of Intel, the company hosted an event yesterday in London and they unveiled a new concept product called The Element. It's a sort of PCIe card, but at the same time, it's a full PC with an 8-pin connector. So the PCIe card contains a CPU, RAM, storage, Wi-Fi, plenty of I.O., and it's powered through the PCIe slot for up to 75 watts and the 8-pin power connector. In fact, it can even be powered by an external 9 volt power brick. Now this is just a concept, but I see how this could be pretty useful in some use cases. I'm not sure how this computer would communicate with the uh, one it's plugged into, but it could replace things like dual systems for streaming or other things, or act as a secondary computer when the first one is being taxed. At first glance, it might look like something dedicated for the server market, but it's actually part of the uh, Intel NUC family, and Intel thinks that it's the future. While it's still in the development phase, this concept is planned for release sometimes in Q1 of 2020. I'll keep an eye on it because it's actually pretty interesting and that's actually pretty soon too. Moving on to Sony, we got some extra juicy bits on the console coming directly from the lead system architect. And actually, it reveals a little more about AMD too. So the first thing that Mark Cerny wanted to clarify during his interview with Wired was ray tracing. With his previous interview, we didn't know if the console would use software or hardware based ray tracing. He didn't actually like that he didn't make it clear, so he specified in this new interview that there is ray tracing acceleration in the GPU hardware. And since it's based on Navi, it means that Big Navi will definitely have the hardware for it. During the interview, they also talked a lot more about the SSD. And well, while it's just an SSD, the explanation as to why it was so necessary is actually quite interesting. I learned a few things about game data on a console, hard drive, and on optical media. I'll leave a link to the interview if you're interested down below. Lastly, they talked about the next-gen controllers, which has what they call adaptive triggers. Essentially, they're putting voice coil actuators in them, which will allow for controllable resistance on the triggers. Microsoft had a similar patent come out earlier this year, but it seems like a more complex integration involving gears. I think Sony's way is more simple and reliable. It also has advanced haptic feedback, but it just means better vibration, really. In gaming news, it looks like id Software hit a bit of a rough patch with Doom Eternal. The game was supposed to be released on the 22nd of November, but as it usually is with these type of delays, the game is being postponed for quality assurance, and it's being postponed until March of 2020. 
Ouch. With the announcement of the delay, they also confirmed that Invasion Mode will be available shortly after launch, that the Nintendo Switch version will release after the other platforms, and that Doom 64 will be available on all of the platforms. And lastly, in smartphone news, a really weird one popped up on my feed. Andy Rubin, co-founder of Essential Phones, posted a photo of a smartphone that can only be described as the longest boy. The form factor of this phone is pretty insane and the company is testing a UI for it. It's also pretty flashy with the whole color shift materials. Personally, I just don't see it as a proper smartphone, just as a I'm trying to use my phone less and less type of phone. I mean, imagine trying to watch a video on this thing. It's already really small and the aspect ratio will make the video no bigger than your damn thumb. What do you guys think? Does it make any sense? Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed uh, listening to my voice. Um, gradually getting worse as the video kept on. Uh, if you got any questions or comments, you can leave them down below. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. I can't believe it. How is that? Literally, it takes me 17 minutes to shoot these and my voice is gone. <laughs> Take care. <laughs>